When you've put these five numbers together, they give you a really good idea of, like, much better than just the mean or just the median on its own, um, of how the data sort of spreads out, okay? So, we're going to do this um, together graphically with what's called a box of whisker chart or a box one. You guys have seen these before, okay? Now, we've got three sets of data here, and I would love us to draw the box of whisker plots for each of them. They're not complicated. So, I'm going to walk you through how to do each one. We'll just do the first one first, and then we'll point out all the bits, and then you can do the second and third ones on your own. The first thing you need is, um, if you've got a ruler there, and if you need to borrow, you're welcome to grab. I'll put it here so it doesn't take your index back. Yeah, you need to, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay, here we go. So what you need is a horizontal axis. Now you'll notice. Oh, you need something else. I was just asking, like, you know, for like first and third quartiles, how would you work out? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, remember. So the question was, how do you work out quartiles when you've got not just ten numbers, but like say a hundred numbers or something like that? Now remember, um, having a look and you can see it, right? Each of the quartiles is kind of like taking uh, the top half of your scores. Actually, that's not in order. I mean this one. The top half of the scores and then finding the median of this guy. Right? That's what the third quartile is. And in the same way, you look at the bottom half of the scores, these guys, and then you find the median there and that's your first quartile. Okay? So therefore, to find quartiles is really the same question as finding medians. You just have to do it more times. So that shortcut we had before of n plus 1 on 2, right? I would say, you know, um, let's actually say there were um, 100 scores, okay? If you have 100 scores, the median divides it into 2, right? So how many scores will be on either side of the median? It, it should be 50-50, right? 50-50. So then think about the 50, and you should be able to say of this, where is the median in that set of 50? Well, I'm going to do this n plus 1 on 2 thing, right? Um, this is my new n. n plus 1 will be 51. I divide by 2. So in this place, I'm going to get 25 and a half, which means that the median of this guy, which is q1, should be halfway between the 25th score and the 26th score. So I don't have to do all of my crossing off. I can go straight up, I can count up to the 25th one and then take the average of those guys. Does that make sense? So that's that still is like, I mean, you know, you can't avoid, you have to get it in order. If you've got such a large data set, they would probably give it to you in order because like we get it. That's, we don't want to just eat up your time, but this is the process you'd go through. Um, what's the significance of the plus one? That's a good question. Um, if you think about how many scores you've got, for instance, this is perfect, you've got 10 scores, right? If you were just to say, all right, take those 10 and divide by 2, that should get you half, right? Well, if you take the original 10 scores and you divide by 2, maybe I'll do it with... Mm, these are all actually happening bad examples because the 5th and 6th scores have the same score. Um, if you looked at 10 divided by 2, you'd get the 5th score, but the 5th score is not the medium, right? Because think about the 5th score. Mm, here it is. How many scores are below it, and how many scores are above it? Four and five. There are four and five, so it's not even. It's not the median, right? So the median is between the fifth and the sixth scores. To get us between, you've got to um, add one, then divide by two, okay? Uh, and the examples we looked at yesterday sort of map that out. All right, now, you've got your horizontal axis there by now. There's no vertical axis because on a box and whisker plot, Vertical length, it doesn't mean anything. It's just kind of arbitrary. Okay. So then let's have a look at um well, yeah, let's do let's do this one. I think it's more interesting. Okay. So when you have a look at this second data set, the five numbers I'm after are the minimum, the maximum, and then these three quartiles. So you need to choose for yourself an appropriate horizontal scale that will get all of those numbers onto your graph. So I think we could justifiably start at 0 and end at, say, we can't end at 10. How about ending at 15? What do you think? Okay. So I'm going to go 0 to 15. I'm going to put some 5s as my um, markers in between it. So maybe you want to do that with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Okay. So I've chosen my horizontal scale. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in all five of these important numbers onto my horizontal scale here. Now, I'm going to put a vertical dash for each one of the numbers. Okay? So I've got two. That's going to be about there. Uh, my next one up is four. Then what have I got next? What is my median? It's seven, isn't it? Seven? So that's going to be about halfway there. My third quartile is 10, it's right on there. And then my maximum value is 11, so I'm pretty close to that. There you go. So these five dashes, they represent the five numbers in my five number summary. To turn this into a box and whisker plot, you look at the middle three and you draw a box around them. So, <coughs> so there's the box in a box, box and whisker plot chart. And then to make the whiskers, in, in the middle, I'm going to draw one line, like this. And there's your graph. Okay. Now, not as a requirement, but I think it is helpful, particularly when you're trying to read something important on this. I personally like to mark all of these important numbers onto my scale. So you see how I've only got 0, 5, 10, 15, etc. Um, with another colour, dotted lines, whatever can distinguish this for you. I'm going to draw from each of my five numbers down to my horizontal axis. Okay? And then if any of these numbers aren't actually already marked out, I'm going to do it. Right? So I said this one was 2, and then I think I have 4, 7, 10's already there, and there's 11. Okay? Um, you don't have to, I'm just making this so it's clearer for you. Uh, if you had it all in the same colour, that would be okay. All right? uh, but the important thing is that if those numbers are important to you, I think you should be able to see what they are unambiguously. Okay? That's really all there is to box and whisker plots. Of course, if I gave the plot to you and it asked you, can you interpret it for me? You're just going to be doing this, but in reverse. Okay. So, can you make a start? This is 11i. So, so skip just, over it. Yeah. So you just get like your three things in the middle, and then you draw your box around that, and then the end two you just connect. Them. Yeah, that's it. So this is your. You might like to add this as well. There's your minimum. There's Q1, Q2, Q3, and your max. Okay. Cool.